to the house of the Lord right now. All I want, all that I need is here in the house, here in the house of the Lord right now. Let's have church. Come on, church. Let's join the heavenly sound. There's nothing like your presence. So church, this morning we're going to do a new song. The song is called Make A Way. So let your heart be encouraged this morning. That whatever we might be going through, that God is making a way. For He is the way maker. He's never failed us. And He won't start now. I know you'll come through. This mountain is moving I fix my eyes on you If you said it, you'll do it
Because you are God, no matter the odds, the outcome is always the same. The words on the pages, the promise you made us, still have the final say. You will make a
tomorrow Cause you're already in it My hope and my future It's already written And I won't, I won't fear tomorrow Cause you're already in it My hope and my future is already written. Come on, can we say that one more time? And I won't fear tomorrow, cause you already in it. My hope and my future is already written. It's already written. And the outcome is that you win It's already written You're the head and not the tail It's already written It's already written He's making a way for you Thank you, Jesus
family, let's lift it up. Say, way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Never change it. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
You never change who you are. I'm Pastor Josh. Hi, I'm Pastor Tara, and thank you for being with us today. And we trust that this word is going to bless you today. So let's go live now to the sermon. I, I want to show you a quick photo of our, I have a photo of our first birthday. Tara and I stood in front of the balloons. And then we did it again today for our 10th birthday. Now, how amazing is that, right? So, two things. She did not get divorced and remarry someone. We have had people ask what happened to the first pastor when we show these photos. Thank God he lost weight. Um, she looks the same. Me, not so much in many areas, but some areas lesser, some areas greater, but God is good. And um, the reason why I wanna show you this photo is that the truth is for a lot of people, 10 years goes by. In all of your lives today, you've had 10 years pass, maybe once, twice, or a few more times. And the truth is though, a lot of things happen between that one and today's 10, right? But when I look back, we see the supernatural grace of God over it all. There were many days where I felt like quitting. I'm sure Tara felt like quitting. But the truth is, God has allowed us to look back and see that even though there were dark days, there were tough moments, God has supernaturally brought us through that season, not only just surviving it, but seeing what the Bible calls fruit that remains. It's not speaking about cars and stuff. Um, it's not speaking about ascertaining assets, although I'm grateful that God has blessed us and God has taken care of us and how God has helped us to see financial prosperity in our lives. But the truth is that's not what matters to God. What matters to God is fruit that remains. And the truth is uh, many people have 10 years passed in their life and all they can really look at is time past. Many people don't have any fruit that remains. And thank God we are married and in love and, and we have incredible children and we're a part of what God is doing. You know, Tara did not marry a pastor God preordained that two pastors would marry each other, right? But that the two of us would be obedient to the call of God over our lives. And I wanna encourage you just for a moment today, next week I'm gonna be speaking into, into, a, into the season on the earth and I wanna encourage you to be in church irrespective of the sports score. Um, <laughs> but, but be in church because I, you know, I will teach something. But today I just wanted to share just a thought and I wanted to share with you what we believe has been the key for us seeing God do what he has done through our lives in the past decade. You know, 10 years ago, God said to us, go start a church. And we said, yes, but the truth is we didn't foresee much of what there is today. Yes, we had hopes and dreams, but we never foresaw the challenges. In fact, when we look over those photos and I see what we began with, I actually get anxiety now because I realize now we had nothing then. We didn't own any property. Uh, we didn't have any savings. Um, the church, you know, didn't have money. Um, and we just said yes to this dream and this call. And we came out here and thank God, some of you in this room were a part of those early meetings, but we were full of faith at the time. But in now when I look back, I'm like, what are you doing? You know, are you crazy? All the things that could go wrong. But I wanna encourage you today from one thought called reach forward in faith, okay? And the interesting thing is that right now, if I asked you what your challenges are, you would look at your natural circumstances today. You would look at what's going on around you. You might find that your challenges is beyond you, it's what's going on around you. Maybe your company has been impacted by what's going on in the world. Maybe, maybe your stress levels have increased and that's taken a knock on your body. Whatever it is that's going on around you, if I mentioned your challenges, if I mentioned to you, why don't you have faith? You would list to me what you're facing. And you would say to me, well, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what my issues are. And the truth is I don't. But the truth is you don't know the challenges that Tara and I have faced. People thought we started Redemption Church with millions of rands. 
We didn't. We had 30 churches tell us they were gonna support us and then they all spoke and they all realized everyone's giving us money so no one did, <laughs> right? Two churches gave us something to start. And people are always, when they start about church planting, there's a whole strategy and nothing wrong with it, but we failed the strategy radically, right? And, and we didn't start with thousands of people. We started with a handful of people and praise God for those people, but we had no natural comfort. Even the animals were attacking our congregation. <laughs> it's a true story. Speak to anyone who was a part of that time, right? So when I was reading scripture, I saw something. How many of you love this scripture in Philippians chapter four, verses 13, that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, the thing is today, you can do nothing through your own strength. And you can do nothing through the people of this world. You can do nothing through the governments of this world. I'm not against governments, but they are not your saviors. They're not your messiahs, right? In fact, what's fascinating about the world we live in today is it's getting darker and darker and darker. And the Bible says thick darkness will cover the people. Thick darkness is when we are so confused we don't know what is truth. We are so deceived, we, we, we have the ability. We, do you know right now on the earth there is enough money to feed everyone. There is enough land for everyone to have houses. There is enough science for us to take care of everyone. But yet we weaponize everything for our own gain at the expense of someone else. Right? And we have such division, it's crazy. There's a tension in the world right now where people are prepared to kill each other for all kinds of reasons, all kinds of issues. And it's so interesting that in the midst of this, God would say, but for you, you will rise. You will shine. My glory will be seen upon you. Now, I'm not telling you today, a life of faith is a life where you commit to do what God has called you to do because you can't. Look at this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul also wrote that we run this race of faith looking unto Jesus. So the thing is, whenever we run out of steam, our eyes have shifted from Jesus and his word to the world. Our eyes have gone from looking at who we are in Christ, what his word says over us, what his word says over our situations, what the call of God over us means to our lives, and we shift our focus to something else. In the same book of Philippians, where we get, I can do all things through Christ, earlier we have a passage of scripture where the author explains to us how he is living a life of faith. See, some people say to me, but pastor, you don't understand. I've been in church my whole life. I've served in every service. I've done this, I've done that. I've done this, I've done this, I've done that. And I can't move forward in my life. Well, the thing is, I would argue, maybe your eyes are on the church, not on Jesus, right? I'm so grateful we're a part of a church that gives the word away. I'm not selling you miracles. I'm not selling you water that if you spray, I'm not selling you oil because I'm not your Messiah. I am but a man pointing you to the man, the Messiah. This church will never be about a person other than Jesus. It, it, it is our ministry that Tara and I steward, but we are not the only ministers. Anyone who stands in the anointing and the call of God of their life in this house can minister a word that will change people's lives. All of you are called to be a part of the bride of Christ and all of you are called to shine with the glory of God, right? But, but how many of you know, some of us have our eyes on people. Maybe you might say, but pastor, I've been trying so hard and I can't resolve my finances because your eyes are on the finances. I've got to change your finances, I've got to change your finances. God wants your eyes on Jesus. Because when your eyes are on Jesus, he can minister to you. Grace is him ministering his righteousness unto you. You know that the Bible says that we all have the ability to access grace in Christ Jesus. Every one of us. But some, they treat it in vain. They labor in vain. Meaning, they don't access grace. They actually make it about living a life for Jesus in their own strength, with their own ideas, with their own plans. That's not a life of faith. A life of faith is going, my goodness, I can't do this, but he can, right? 
Peter says, hey, silver and gold, I don't have, but I can introduce you to the one who has healing for your body, right? It is about what Jesus can do. And we can only do all things when we are recognizing it's through him who strengthens us. This same book earlier says in Philippians chapter three, verses seven through 14, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. See, you think a car will fulfill the hole in your life. You think a promotion will fulfill a hole in your life. You think fame will fulfill a hole in your life. You think, oh, if that person, if I could look like that, if I could just have a six pack, if I could just, I don't know what's the fashion these days. Thank God for baggy jeans coming back. I do not have a skinny jean physique, all right? But however you see yourself, you're always looking at something else to give you shalom, wholeness, purpose, peace. But Paul's writing here, everything I've lost, right, doesn't even come close to the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus, my Lord. Knowing him as my Lord, not just their Lord, their Lord, their Lord. Can I tell you something? I had no idea you were on the other side of our yes to Jesus 10 years ago. We didn't know you. We hadn't seen you. We hadn't met you. But he did, right? And as we, Tara and I, came to know him as our Lord, he has used us to shine. We have a lot of work. I have a lot of work. Tara's far more spiritual than I am by the grace of God. You know, uh, it, it, it is, she is the... She is by far the one who spends more time in the word and that's why the Lord has given her me because he grows her in long suffering and patience and kindness, <laughs> right? The only thing I say, Lord, never heal is her eyesight. Okay, there's a selfish reason for that. It says, the knowledge of Christ for whom I suffer the loss of all things and count these things as rubbish that I gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, not faith in me, faith in a brand, faith in a church, faith in an economy, faith in anything, faith in Jesus, the righteousness which comes from God by faith in Christ, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be conformed to his death if by any means that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay a hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid a hold of me. There is a purpose for which Jesus saved you. And you have to lay a hold of that purpose. The very thing Christ Jesus laid a hold of me, my righteousness becoming, his righteousness becoming my righteousness, his purpose becoming my purpose, his family becoming my family. I grab onto that. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, right? I, this is what it says in verse 13. I don't count myself to have apprehended, but the one thing I do. So what do I do when I'm not there yet? Can I tell you something? Until Jesus comes or you go to him, right? You're not there yet. You're never there yet. The writer, Paul here, spent the majority of his life in prison where it looked like God was limiting him. He could have even argued, if you want me to be a minister, why can I never go out and minister? You're always allowing these guys. One time we sing the walls fall down, but the rest of my life, the walls stay up. The rest of the time, the prison warden is torturing me, laughing at me. Where are you? right? But the interesting thing is he, has, he is telling you, I'm not there. And when I recognize I am not there, one thing I do. Not one thing I think, one thing I do. What? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Forgetting what's behind, reaching forward to what's ahead. Here's the thing. What do we do in our natural life? We reach, you're always reaching. Listen to me, you're always reaching. You're always reaching for a like, for a share, for woke ideas, for woke wisdom. And we're never reaching for this. And here's the truth, when you reach for that, 
the devil does something to you. You can be in church today and God is speaking over your life today. You won't remain in brokenness. You won't remain in bondage. You won't remain addicted. You won't remain depressed and oppressed. You won't remain these things and you'll feel it in this room. But what are you gonna do when you say, I haven't yet got it? What are you gonna do when you say, I'm not yet healed? What are you gonna do when you say, I'm not yet succeeding in business, right? Well, this is what the world wants you to do to reach, but to reach back, to reach for the things of this world. You see, you wake up looking unto Jesus, looking at his word, and the devil comes with news and social media and ideas and opinions, and those start to trigger you based on past experiences or current fears, and you slowly start looking away from looking forward to looking backwards, and you turn your gaze, and now you start reaching and reaching and reaching and reaching, but you're never reaching for the word. You're reaching for, how am I gonna save this? How am I gonna fix that? How am I gonna do this? Look at what happened there. Look at how I was hurt in the past. Look at how I get bolder by the year and the year, (laughs) right? And God says, forget that. Because if you can't forget that, one thing I do, forgetting, if you can't say that's not gonna help, forget it, don't focus on it. I want you to reach forward for the things that are ahead. What things? Verse 14, press forward towards the goal for the prize of the upward call in God, in Christ Jesus. This call of God is an upward call. When you reach for the things of this world, oh, this is what this person thinks. Oh, you don't really know what's going on here. This is what this thinks. You don't really understand what this people group is thinking, that people group, what this means for our economy, what this means for this. Oh, you think forgiving has helped you. Well, now I'm gonna hurt you even more. You think you've got a future. Well, now I'm gonna tell you that your job is getting taken away. We reach for these things. And God says, if you would reach forward for the upward call, right, right, that would release you living in the victory of Christ, right? It's an upward call. And if you won't reach up for him, for his word, you'll reach out. And if you won't reach up, you reach out. And instead of the upward call, you get the downward fall. What happened to you between Sunday and Wednesday? You were reaching for the wrong stuff. My goodness, (laughs) this is our lives. This is the most dangerous thing. This has destroyed more marriages, more lives. This has taken more suicides. This has created more wars. This has started more racist divides than anything else ever in the history of the world. Please don't reach for this first before reaching for this, right? See, the thing is the early church they couldn't reach for politics. They couldn't reach for power. Are you, Jesus, are you here? Finally, we can destroy the Romans. This is the empire that now seeks to destroy us. Jesus, I'm not here for that kingdom. What do you want us to do? Can we kill? No, pray, love, serve. What, for each other? No, for those who want to kill you, those who want to destroy you, those who want to take you out. Right, that's, that's that I would have been going, can I, can I join the church later? Um, if this really works out, I'll give it a try, but right now I'm gonna let you guys have a go, right? But think about it. This is what literally, this is what leads to walking with the Lord. See, what you reach for, you'll walk with. How do you get to a place where you're drinking yourself into an oblivion, where you are, where you are so enraged by racism, you look at people and hate them? You get there by reaching for the wrong stuff and that leads you down a road. Whenever my kids are in a pool and they can't swim. It's re- who are you reaching for? And the thing is, when you reach for Jesus and you grab his hand, literally by consequence, he pulls you up into the upward call, right? And what I love is it doesn't say reach upward for salvation. It says it's not just about salvation. There is a life beyond getting saved that is the call of God on your life. You are not alive in this country to plan an escape, to store up coins and gold and random things. You are meant to live a life of faith where you walk the streets and you're different, right? There is one place right now in the world where Jew and Arab are loving one another. Do you know what that is? The church, only one. Why? Because that is the fruit of the upward call. 
that says, who am I in Christ? Who am I in Christ? Let me tell you something. This world is going to get darker and darker and darker, but the church has the opportunity to shine like nothing else because the church has the ability to be what no one else can be, which is who we are in Christ Jesus. Maybe you're saying today, Pastor, you don't understand what my life is at. Well, here's the deal. Just change from grabbing at the wrong stuff. Shift your gaze to Jesus and reach forward in faith. Not faith in yourself, faith in your ability, in Him. You know, we, we had a testimony in this church. Some, someone was heavily addicted to smoking. And uh, I'm gonna close with this. And um, they, they were here and they said, God, please help me addic- quit smoking because I just don't wanna do this anymore. And if you're a smoker here today, no problem. Uh, you know, I can tell you that, that even I smoked at some point in my unsaved running around life. And, um, you know, you, don't, you smoke often because you thought it was cool or because you're stressed, right? But now, you know, if you're a smoker, you smoke because you're stressed. And you're stressed because you're worried. You're worried because you don't have a certain future, because you don't know how to control things. And the one thing you can control is that and getting a shot of nicotine, which is supposed to calm you and relax you. So the interesting thing is they said, God, help me quit smoking. That was the prayer. And then they lost their job. How many of you know that's not the way to quit smoking, right? (laughs) And so then it's like, well, thanks. Do you know what I mean? God help me forgive people and then people start treating you worse. So they lost their job and then a few weeks later, after probably hundreds of packs of cigarettes, they got a new job. But the thing is that this new company, this company were health freaks, right? Crazy about health. And so they couldn't smoke in their office, they couldn't smoke in their building, and they couldn't even smoke on the property. They had to leave the property, have a cigarette, and they were the only person that smoked. And a few months later, they realized they'd quit smoking. And then at church, they realized, hang on a second, I thought God was abandoning me, but he was actually leading me, right? And so I wanna encourage you today, just give God the space. If you're not where you are, one thing I do, forget what's behind and reach forward in faith for the upward call. Man, we've had many days we wanted to quit. Many days we thought about, but you know what? By the grace of God, after all the complaining and whining, which I never do, (laughs) we still made the decision, I'm gonna keep reaching forward in faith. Because God is in our future. Yes, there's a devil. Yes, there's an enemy. And yes, there's trials and tribulations. But God is there too. And I want to encourage you today. All you got to do is say, yes, okay, today I'm going to reach forward in faith. And tomorrow I'm going to keep reaching forward in faith. And I want to encourage you, put this down. Pick this up. Right? Switch this off. Switch this on. Because that's how the Lord wants to lead you. You're gonna reach and grab onto something and it's gonna lead you down a path. Just grab onto Jesus, your good shepherd, and let him lead you into victory, lead you into purpose, lead you into the upward call that you have, this godly call in Christ Jesus. Right, amen? I believe the best is yet to come for the church. I believe, and when I say the church, I don't mean redemption, I mean you. You are the church, the bride of Christ, right? We're a part of a church called Redemption, called Rhema in South Africa, in the Netherlands and in other places, Germany or Hungary. I mean, whatever God is doing, but you are the church. Don't let us receive blessing and you deny blessing over your life. God wants you to thrive. God wants you to walk in purpose and God wants you to grab onto the upward call. Do you believe that and receive that today? Thank you, Jesus. And now we're going to be receiving, remembering our victory remembering our righteousness together. We're gonna be receiving communion together. So if you can, wherever you are watching, take out some bread, some juice, some crackers, some water, anything to be the body and the blood of Jesus. This is such a precious moment. As you can see, it's not traditional. It's not about being traditional. It's about seeing God's power in our circumstance. This is our moment of remembrance, where we see that God can turn a sick body into a healthy body and a person who is literally consumed with brokenness into someone who is whole, experiencing the shalom peace of God. So as we take this bread, this cracker, we speak and we say, this is Jesus's body 
that is broken for me. By his stripes, I am healed. And as we break and we eat, we receive and we reflect and we remember our healing is from the Lord. We are healed and whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now we're gonna receive his blood shed for us speaks that you are righteous. In Christ Jesus, you will never stand before God and not be seen as righteous. God always extends the gold scepter to you and says, yes, my child, you are accepted, you are favored, you are pleasing. We remember today that Jesus shed his blood, that all our sin, past, present, and future, has paid for in full. We are loved and we are righteous in Christ Jesus. We receive together today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my